City. It's the Wendy Williams Show. How are you doing? The kids have come to play today. You won't believe what I'm about to tell you. With all due respect, have several seats. My girls are always turned out. I give it to you straight, no chaser. Now. Just another day to be grateful around the way. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. Hey. Hey. And that would be on the talk show front. If you haven't heard, live from Kelly and Michael is now just live from Kelly. Oh. Or live with Kelly. Well, Michael Strahan is leaving the show to join Good Morning America full time. Oh. Well, you know. It's always nice to get two paychecks. But you know, sometimes you get to a point in your life where you realize all money's not good money and maybe you need to have more time to nap and spend time with your kids. I don't know why he's leaving. I don't know what's going on. This came out of nowhere. Uh, late breaking news just less than 24 hours ago. But he was on live for four years. Can you believe it's been four years? Wow. Like I remember, you know, us voting here on the show for who should replace um, Regis. Regis. And I remember saying, like, her husband, Mark Consuelos, I think that they're really cute together. Um, you know, putting in a whole bunch of, you know, names in the pot. But anyway, so they ended up choosing Michael, which I thought was a great fit. Um, so he's on GMA. Um, I don't know whether it will be Kelly with a bunch of rotating co-hosts now or what. My thing about rotating co-hosts is that eventually it's got to stop. Like, even on The View, you know, like, like they, don't, they don't do, no, no, they don't do that so much anymore. Like, we know Candace, we love her. We, we know Raven, you know, um, she gives us opinion. We know Joy and Whoopi and Paula and Michelle. So they've gotten their thing together. But, you know, it's only Kelly there. And, you know, four years ago, I thought Anderson Cooper would have made a great co-host for her. But, and I like Anderson, but that was four years ago. Right now, CNN is doing better than they've ever done because it's an election year. And for him, I would not want to mess up my CNN, you know, newsman thing, <laughs> you know? So, you know, where I used to think Anderson, it's hard to wear Ellie Mae Clampett shirts. <laughs> the, the whole show, I'm gonna be pulling up shoulders and making sure nothing falls too low. <laughs> and then the next thing you'll hear is, boop, you know. <laughs> anyway, so I no longer think Anderson is the fit. Plus, I also feel like Kelly and Anderson are so close that a lot of their stories would be too inside and we wouldn't understand. You know, like she comes out in the morning and she says to her co-host, so what'd you do last night? And Anderson would be the one to say, what do you mean, what did I do? I talked to you on the phone for two hours. You know what I did last night. They're, like they're close. But don't mess up the CNN thing, Anderson. We need you there. Um, then her husband, Mark Consuelos. Well, you know, um, 
I never read anything bad about their marriage. So I'm thinking this maybe would be a good fit. You know, Mark and Kelly are both friends to our show. I think that they are so adorable and they've got the best teeth between the two of them. <laughs> and you know, She's my Jersey girl and they met on um, All My Children and they've been married since forever. I remember they ran off to Vegas and didn't invite anybody, anybody back in the day. The only thing is, is that it's really difficult for maybe a husband and wife to work together doing the exact same thing when the wife is on top and has been doing it for a long, the exact same thing. I'm not talking, you know. <laughs> I, I'm not talking where, you know, he's the nurse and she's the cardiologist. I'm talking where they're both cardiologists, but he's brand new, so he gets paid less than her. And then she's been around longer, so she might get that hormonal snap that we all get. You, you know what I mean? Like, so I don't... I'm not into wrecking people's relationships, so maybe it's just best that maybe Mark even now doesn't host because she's been on this show now for like 15 years. And he'd be coming in at a lesser salary and she'd essentially be the, uh, the boss. <laughs> Might not work. You know what I mean? Might not work. So then I was thinking about, because I had suggested four years ago before Strahan was hired, I said, well, what about Neil Patrick Harris? Only, you know, then the show would be too Hollywood. Do you follow what I'm saying? Yes. Like, you know, Kelly's our New York girl, but she's very Hollywood. She's been doing this for 15 years. Neil Patrick Harris is over the moon between the Tonys and the Emmys and the Oscars and all that. It'd be maybe too Hollywood. And then I was thinking, okay, no, somebody brought up in the meeting um, Mario Lopez. Nope. I'll tell you why. I love Mario Lopez, but he's very, very guarded. Mario, how you doing? Based on my experience with you. No, look, look, no, look, Mario's, Mario is very, very guarded regarding his um, grooming himself to be like the next Ryan Seacrest and he doesn't want a lot to slip out. And a lot of times when you all watch daytime TV, you like a little sloppy. And just a little, just, just a little, you know. The mess. <laughs> Thank you. And, and Kelly, in a lovable way, can be sloppy and lovable. But Mario is way too controlling of his own demeanor. And then, okay, so here's my final thought, and then I'm gonna bow out. But you know I always have an opinion, so I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> um, look, how, how about Alphonse Ribeiro? No? Okay, well, I agree. But, 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 here's the thing. I've never met him to have a conversation with him, which he'll be here next Tuesday. Okay. So, in conducting my line of questioning with him, I also wanna find out about his personality because he might be good next to Kelly, then again, maybe not. And finally, my number one choice, my number one choice, Jerry O'Connell. Yeah. Jerry is all American, wild and sloppy and everything that you love in a daytime host. Now his wife, Rebecca Romaine, is here today and I wanna talk to her about her husband being uh, with the Kelly Show. <laughs> All right, Madonna. Well, here's the problem. You know when you have teenagers and they can see through your bull mess and they know when you're trying to really try too hard to get along with them, and then they take advantage of you? Yeah. Well, I do. <laughs> so, Madonna's trying really hard to be the fun parent. Now, you would think normally, 
Madonna is the fun parent. I mean, she wears fishnets. <laughs> <laughs> she rides a tricycle. <laughs> she, falls, she, she falls off the tricycle onto the ground. I mean, like that's Madonna. But you know, Madonna's also the same mom who's raised her kids with no TV, only books she approves of, and a whole bunch of other nonsense that we're like, as regular parents, we're like, really? <laughs> but you know, Rocco is uh, now 15, and he's been fed up with her strict rules, and he went to live with his fun dad, now Madonna reportedly, because her career is now over, she's got time for Rocco. <laughs> Excuse me, what I say, her time is over? Her career. Her career? <laughs> <laughs> I met nothing by that, madam. Fine, 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 fine. Um, no, reportedly Madonna is trying to prove that she's cool to Rocco. She threw a party for Rocco and his friends that lasted until 2 a.m. Well, see, no, the Hot Topics Bureau was throwing chairs. They're like, 2 a.m.? I'm like, yeah, he's 15 years old. So if the party gets started at a cool time, like eight or nine o'clock at night, and it's in a controlled environment, there's nothing wrong with the kids partying until 2 a.m. as long as you know, you know all the parents, and y y y you understand what I'm saying? Anyway. Um, she then um, ended up taking him out to hang out at a London hotspot. Oh. Well, I assumed it was a club as well. <laughs> it was a restaurant, but when you open the restaurant door to the other room, that's where the club is going. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes. So, you know, kids smell when you're trying too hard and they do crave boundaries. Um, she's got to play his game, but be smarter with him. Like taking him into the club part of the restaurant might not have been the best thing. I'm not sure, you know, whether this is a club club, like we have to be 21 or older, but when you say you're Madonna, all of a sudden they let your kid, you know, come in or what? I don't know. How do you feel about going to the club maybe one day with your kids? Well, anyway, <laughs> um, clap if you don't mind that at a particular time in your life. Thank you. You eight are my people. <laughs> at a particular point in life, like are you serious? College graduation, you worked this hard, you're 21 years old, you got your degree? Come on. I don't think I would mind that. Madonna and Guy seem to be getting along. Um, he went to her home in London and brought a bottle of $180 wine. Now, mind you, he's getting out of a Range Rover. And I had to ask, well, was he driving? <laughs> With the bottle uncorked? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it turns out, no, he was in the back seat and there was a driver standing over his shoulder that had opened the door for him and stuff. Um, but, you know, they seem to be getting along and, you know, Madonna, you know, we talk about you a lot here on Hot Topics, but, but you know, as any mom knows, raising kids, that is the level playing field for all parents. I don't care whether you're a pauper or a princess. It, is, it levels the playing field. Like these kids, <laughs> there's something. Yes. <laughs> Do you know that Idris Elba has an ex-wife? And, and she talks? <laughs> first, first, you know, Hot Topics reminded me that they told me that he has an ex-wife, but I don't remember. And maybe I don't, because they were only married for six weeks. <laughs> Back in 2006, all right, she's a lawyer, a, pr a property lawyer. Ooh. And this is back when he was struggling. <laughs> so essentially, she probably had all the money for the bills and he's still talking about, I wanna be an actor, I wanna be an actor. But between the way he looks and his accent, I'm sure she was like, okay. <laughs> Oh, 
you can't trust a big butt and a smile. <laughs> Woo! So anyway, so her name is Sonia and she's talking. And she told the Daily Mail that the marriage ended because it wasn't good for his image as a sex symbol. Now, what you have to understand is that the, these days, um, being married or not doesn't seem to stop anybody, whether you're a decent woman or a thought. Like, if, <laughs> it, 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 seem, it seems like, you know, if you like a man, you just go on and, and do your thing, which is disgusting. <laughs> but that's what you do, a lot of you. But back, in the, but, back in the, but back in the day, like back in 2006 and even before, I remember the first artist I ever met who told me confidentially that he does have a girlfriend but he doesn't want to talk about it because it ruins his image is Keith Sweat. You know Keith Sweat, I want, I want her. Well, it was around the time I Want Her was out, which is like 1990. And, um, and Keith, you know, had a girlfriend, but he's like, Wendy, I can't talk about it because it ruins the whole sex symbol thing. And I was like, okay, I guess I get it. But now a lot has changed and, and artists don't really, you know, do that anymore. But back in 2006, Idris was brand new. And she, they lived in Maryland. That's where she does her um, lawyering, in Maryland, Sonia. And so, so, but his people were all in his ear, like you're brand new, you're hot, you got the accent, you're tall, you're good brown. If you say... <laughs> well, no, cut. There... There's, bra... There's bad brown. <laughs> Don't be fooled. There is bad brown. So they're like, you're good brown, and you could really go far, but you have to dump this notion of talking about you have a wife. As a matter of fact, if it's not too late, can you please file for divorce, you know, after this meeting? And so they ended up splitting in the name of his career. And then his friends are all in his ear. This is back in 2006. Like, you don't need Sonia. She might be smart, but, and she might be pretty, but she's not a bombshell. Aww. His people are like, you need a bombshell. I guess, you know, pa-pow, pa-pow. <laughs> and all that mess. So, you know, Sonia, I appreciate you speaking to the Daily Mail about this conversation. It really is, there are eight million stories of actors and actresses in Hollywood who get this same uh, conversation from their publicists, their lawyers, their friends and whatnot saying, this is the wrong person for you. If you really wanna make it big, you need to trade up and trade often or don't act like you have trade at all. Trade. <laughs> So, Gwen, Eve, I want front row seats. I'll get them on my own. I will get them on my own. Oh, man. Oh, everything is, it's sliding and there's a whole mess going on. Anyway, they're going on tour together. Yes, yes. There's no argument here. Eve is gonna open for Gwen. It's gonna be the tour of the summer in my mind. I am going. We went to go see, um, I was telling you, um, what did we say at the movies? Barbershop, Barbershop, Barbershop three. three. <laughs> the second we sat down, the boy is like, oh my gosh, mommy, she's so pretty. <laughs> Eve. So I know he'll be my, you know, date, you know, for the thing. Um, anyway, but you remember back in the day, they did one of the biggest jams ever, Let Me Blow Your Mind? Yeah. Both girls. And, and they did another song called Rich Girl. Yeah. And so between Eve opening up and then Gwen closing up, I just feel like this is gonna be the tour of the summer yeah. on the low. Now, in my mind, what I picture, first of all, no fighting at all. Like, these are the two girls, when the concert's over at midnight, they both go back to their own suites and then put on their pajamas, take their showers and whatnot, and then meet in one of their suites, and they order all the room service and drink wine until like five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> laughing, like, like two grown women with no mess.
And you know, you know, Gwen, Gwen is still in the fight regarding this music and there's nothing wrong with that. Plus she's got the voice and her new relationship with Blake and so it's keeping her out there. Eve has chosen, it seems, to fall back, which I love. Eve is not necessarily pressed for doing music. She married a billionaire. Okay. So Eve, like on the low, Eve has got the ideal life that I think a lot of women would like to have. Eve drives around the world in those gumball cars. <laughs> and she doesn't have bio kids, but she's only 37, so she still has a chance, according to Dr. Oz. <laughs> but she's got four fantastic stepchildren that she gets along with. And the gumball man adores her. And he's got more money than she would ever know what to do with. So she can choose or not choose her entire life. Isn't that how you ultimately want to be? Yeah. Suzanne, that's how you do it. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. you, you you retire from your heavy duty lifting mm -hmm. while you're still young enough mm -hmm. to sport your paws. Mm -hmm. Okay, while you can still sport your paws and wear fly clothes, it's you know when it gets a little bit not sad but a little bit disheartening to me when it seems like you're scraping for the spotlight. Like, I love Garcelle Bouvier. Okay. But, can we talk? Cause how I know Garcelle the most, I mean, you know, from a lot of acting roles and stuff, but how I know her the most is fancy from the long running Jamie Foxx show. But then, I turn on the TV most recently and she's on this show called Hollywood Today Live. Yes. Now I love me some Ross Matthews, yes. okay? Yes. And I had never heard of these other two cute people, <laughs> but the surprise wild card is that Garcelle is on a show talking about celebrities when you are the celebrity. Like, it, it just seems Regular brow for me, or, you know, cause I made a living doing, you know, you know what I'm saying? And, and regular brow for Ross and these other two people. But for you, Garcelle, you are the celebrity. It just seems, it just seems weird for you to be talking about pop culture on a show about pop culture when you're supposed to be an actress. That's all. <laughs> JC, uh, Jay Z and Solange are still fighting. Oh. I say still because I just never feel that anyone got over the elevator incident. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good dress Solange has on though, isn't it? but you have to be really skinny to wear all that material, otherwise you look like a oompa. <laughs> yeah, she looks good. Anyway, um, so here's what they're fighting about now. Okay, according to our friends at OK Magazine, Jay-Z is upset because Solange um, went along and made a lifestyle website. Well, you know what? You're my brother-in-law, you're not the boss of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He reportedly is very furious because he was working on a similar lifestyle site for Beyonce. You know, like how these Gwyneth Paltrow people and you know, these, these people have these websites. The thing about Beyonce is that I don't really look at Beyonce as a lifestyle girl. I think that Beyonce just puts on what's cute but doesn't really take ownership of it. You know, even the, from when Blue Ivy was in diapers, I don't picture Beyonce being married to a particular brand. You know, I don't care about following a Beyonce recipe on some website. 
you know, you know, it, it, Beyonce can tell me that, you know, this is the best, you know, hair oil for your hair. I don't see Beyonce as being that girl, and I'm not saying this beehive relax, okay? <laughs> Just please do not swarm over here, because I got my, I got my bug spray ready. <laughs> but, you know, in order to have a lifestyle website or a lifestyle brand, people have to be invested in what you wear, what you do, or what you eat and stuff. And I just don't see Beyonce as being that girl. I see her as being the magnificent singer and entertainer that she is, but don't try to sell me laundry detergent and tell me you, you use it. <laughs> whereas, whereas Solange, in a weird way, seems like the more down-to-earth, normal uh, sister. Like if she told me use patchouli oil in, you know, when I do my hair natural, I'd be like, okay, great, because Solange is saying it. If she told me the best way to, you know, line your lips or something like that, I kind of would, be I kind of would believe it. Or if you know you like hemp clothing, this is where you, you know a lot of people are into natural stuff these days. You know what I'm saying? You know if you like alkaline water, this is what I drink. If you want hemp clothing, this is what I use. It, it, you know, I it, it, Beyonce is not as believable as Solange in this lifestyle brand. And and Jay Z, you're not the boss of me. You're my brother-in-law. Okay. <laughs>